Hey everyone, welcome back to Pretty Well. Dr. Angela here with you. In this video, we're gonna cover a not so sexy topic, flaky, itchy scalp, AKA dandruff. I know we've been on a super glamorous roll lately in terms of topics we're covering, but I feel like these are some of the topics that I know many of us commonly struggle with, but we don't like to talk about them. And so we might secretly be searching for ways to deal with them online and so i thought you know we could do a little video covering this because i know it's pretty common i know i myself since my teenage years have actually struggled with some flare-ups of dandruff um, and i know many of my patients do as well because it gets checked off on the intake form often it's not the chief complaint it's not what drives most of us into a doctor's office or a dermatologist's office but it's certainly annoying um, i definitely like to wear a lot of black um, many of you may have noticed at this point a lot of my wardrobe choices are black and there's nothing grosser and just like ickier than having little white flakes all over your clothes so um the good news is this is actually something that uh, we can take a lot of proactive steps to keep in check. So I want to cover some of those here with you guys, because just like the after school learning specials, the more we know, the better we can do at taking good care of our bodies. So um, dandruff, one of the most common causes of dandruff or triggers of dandruff um, is a skin condition that's diagnosed as seborrheic dermatitis. And it's not limited to the scalp, but most of us who will experience it will have it on the scalp. It can also be sometimes on the eyebrows or ears or um, around our mouth, just little kind of white flaking skin. Uh, so there is a fungal component to that skin condition. It's a chronic inflammatory skin condition. It's not dangerous in any way, but it is annoying. And um, it's also a sign for us to check into other things. So um, one of the reasons why we might have a flare up in this yeast that's normally found on our skin is that um, we might be stressed. Uh, we might have other situations going on where our immune system's a little suppressed. Um, a common situation uh, might be a slightly low thyroid. That's a common reason for a lot of fungal skin conditions. And so that can also happen on our scalp and on our face if we're prone to the seborrheic dermatitis. So definitely checking in on our stress levels, check in our thyroid levels. Um, interestingly enough, genetics, those of us who are prone to more sebum production, so more oil production, um, the type of yeast that causes this flaking situation uh, actually likes the high oil environment. And so um, sometimes women who have higher androgen levels like DHEA or testosterone might produce more of this oil in our skin. Um, men definitely, and so sometimes men are actually more prone to dandruff because of the situation where we make more oil in our skin. Um, one of the things that feeds the yeast that can normally be found on our skin is sugar. So this is a chronic inflammatory conditions so we want to be thinking about anything that can increase inflammation so we'll talk about that in a second but sugar has two ways of making this worse one is that sugar in general is just inflammatory and the other is that sugar certainly feeds microbes like yeast and so kind of double whammy there and so sugar can mean actual cane sugar but it can also mean things like honey um, alcohol is metabolized as a carbohydrate and so you know having excess alcohol can flare up skin issues like that having just a lot of simple carbs so pasta crackers you know, uh, bagels, toast, sandwiches, all that sort of thing. So really being mindful to up our nutrient dense foods as usual and turn down our pro-inflammatory foods. Um, another thing to think about is if you have food intolerances or food allergies, you can do a simple elimination reintroduction diet. You can also get blood testing done that can help you figure that out as well. Um, but avoiding foods that are your allergy or intolerances um, because having more of those can upregulate inflammation in your body and make skin conditions including seborrheic dermatitis aka dandruff worse um, what else can we do so in terms of supplements here are some 
things that can be very helpful. Um, number one, making sure we have adequate essential fatty acids. Um, these are really anti-inflammatory. So these are classic omega-3s, so EPA and DHA that's typically found in seaweeds and fish. Um, also, flax seeds are a source of omega-3 fatty acids. And then also some of the GLA sources, things that would be found in evening primrose oil, borage, those are really great to help take down inflammation in the skin. Another thing that's been found in research is that um, some of the B vitamins can be deficient in some people who struggle with a lot of these flaky skin conditions. And so uh, the key B vitamins that we're looking at here are B6, B2, folate, and biotin. Um, so you could take a multivitamin, you could take a high quality B complex, you might supplement with a little bit of extra biotin on top of that. And then the other really great nutrient for taking care of a lot of these flaky skin issues um, is zinc. Uh, and zinc can be used orally, but it can also be used topically. So you'll notice a lot of the commercial preparations like head and shoulders um, have zinc in them. Um, there's definitely some great natural product lines as well that are rich in zinc if we need some topical control. So both in shampoos and then um, they do have scalp lotions that you can leave in if things are really flared up. But as always, you know, trying to get to the root cause of the issue. I mean, we definitely want to do damage control once an issue is happening and active, but if we know what brings on a problem to do work to prevent an issue from occurring to begin with. And then we don't have to deal with all of the symptom management. So that's just a little bit on some quick, easy, natural ways to take care of flaky scalp, itchy scalp, uh, dandruff. Uh, there's many things that are also effective. Not everything that's natural, you know, has been studied. There are quite a few things that have been studied and I can put links for some of those in the description box for you guys. But essentially knowing that from a conventional medicine standpoint, the way we tend to manage dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis is to um, prescribe topical steroids and topical antifungals. Those are some effective treatments for uh, minimizing and eliminating dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis. And so we can think about the same mechanisms of action, um, but through natural things. Emu oil has some studies out there that show that it's been effective in helping to calm this down. So if any of you out there have um, used any natural items that are anti-inflammatory and antifungal and you've had good results, definitely share that with the community. If you have links to different studies you want to pop in the comment box, do that so we can all learn together and keep the comments coming in terms of what you'd like to keep learning about and we will keep trying to address questions as quickly as possible. We love having you guys here with us. It's been so fun to watch the community grow. So sorry we're a little bit behind on questions. Sometimes life happens, but we will catch up and answer as many questions as we can. Take wonderful care. See you back here soon.